Ang kwetsyo ko. Ang jumlah biaya pakam to ke jumlah kan di tepi tam naka. Perlawan kaya junter. Saat ni ya rong kit dan bayi to kaya tang semrut ini dalam jepuh. Nek jumlah ini. Akun lok tien sem grup ang sem naka teng bul. Sem grup lok serai. ជាថ្មីម្ដងទៀតហើយពេលនេះខ្ញុំសូមបន្តសំណួរខ្ញុំទៅលោកស្រីបន្តទៀតអឺឥឡូវខ្ញុំចូលទៅវិធានបត់
ដោយកន្លែងស្រីកថាពិធីរីកការរីបពីពៀនវាមានលក្ខណៈពិតប្រកាសដោយរីតេឬក៏ពីសង្គ ដោយសារថាលោកស្រីថានឹងបកផ្ដាល់នៅចំណោយថ្ងៃស្អែកដូចនេះខ្ញុំអឺនឹងចូលទៅសួរបញ្ហាផ្សេងទៀតអឺល
this was for the, the, the start of a snowball. Someone's parent um, knew a person that they were married with in the same wedding students because people have kept relationships with some of those collectives uh, and students went to that person that they were referred to to do the first interview and from that they snowballed. So that first, that first interview was found through a discussion sometimes but not always with a parent. Yes, that's correct. And I want to add one more footnote to my response to your former question. There was one student who submitted my thesis just to make sure there's no misunderstanding. There was one student who, through the course of doing this research study, discovered that his parents were married on DK. But he did not interview his parents. He did not interview his parents. គឺតែគាត់ទៀតតែដឹងនៅពេលដែលយើងចាប់ <coughs> <coughs> Yes, that's correct. Uh, and I would like to add an addendum to that as well with regard to my research because I used that last stage with this form that I created um, as a way of getting more saturation on my data so that even if I took those 102 interviews that the students did and put it into the side, though a smaller sample, my results would be the same. ปันกํารูหรือខ្ញុំបានធ្វើពីមុនកលមមកនោះទេអរគុណលោកស្រីខ្ញុំនៅប្រហែលជាមកពីបីសនោទៀតទេសូមលោកស្រីជួយឆ
Firstly, your second question is different than your, your second question is different than your first question. I can respond to both, but I'll respond to the second. With regard to people being reluctant to speak to me about their sexual experiences, maybe perhaps because I was a foreigner, I have to um, clarify that my age and my marital status was an advantage to me when I was working in the field. Most women who were wed under DK were my age. Um, I was a widow um, at the time when I did my interviews. I had a child that was born in 1976. They were very curious about my personal biographical history. And as a result of them having that information, much to my surprise, much more interesting information was forthcoming to me. With regard to the first question, and I will answer it because I think it's an important question because it has come up in other studies like Nakagawa study, um, I think it depends on the role of the person when they are young speaking to elders. For example, um, I go to villages with medical teams in Cambodia, um, and I often travel with nurses that are younger than villagers that we're speaking to about sexual health history, and they are quite comfortable with a nurse in that role to give them information. I worked very hard to establish trust through association. So my students, that is why I started with my students starting with them getting someone that their parents knew so that there would be trust to begin with and a former association in a community way. So that is why I started my research studies that way. My students may not have gotten as much information from me, but they certainly got enough for me to continue my research. Thank you. អរគុណលោកស្រីខ្ញុំសូមសួរនៅសំណួរចង់ក្រោយមួយទៀតរបស់ខ្ញុំគឺខ្ញុំមើលឃើញហាការសិក្សានៅក្នុងនិកាយប
ขยมมือในขนมไอกระซ่าในเขตบอลลูกไซคือมีนดอกดอกจีงไปเนี่ยให้ขยมโยนซอฟได้ลูกไซมีนภาษาท้าดอกปลายดอกปลามเปียรอยไอ้และลูกไซท้ามีนใบเนี่ยขยมโดยจีจองไอ้ลูกไซจุยไปแจกมาลองติดจบจุ่มนู้นไปให้จีหัวเต้ไปให้มาพายผมบุญเนี่ยน้องจุ่มน้ำมาร้อยกลางสปีเนี่ยหนึ่งจังดับปรามพิโรยนั่งยมกระทาไปหายจีซอมรุมแต่บนสายทามีนใบเนี้ยพิโรยจีมีนตันอะไรทำไมวิ่งเขย่อมได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยินได้ยิน Madam Witness, what is your understanding of the details? Madam Witness, I understood you to say the time the Vietnamese came in, the Vietnamese invasion began on Christmas 25th of 1978. An armed pen fell on the 7th of January 1979. These 29 interviews, unless they happened to be in those first six days of January, all took place after the decay period and all after the Vietnamese invasion. Now, the Vietnamese invasion began on the 7th of January 1979. The Vietnamese invasion began on the 7th of January 1979. The Vietnamese invasion began on the 7th of January 1979. The Vietnamese inv
I will need to go back to my hard data to get the period because what I did in the thesis, I do have my hard data in my book. What I did in this thesis was I summarized my data. Um, and so I will go back and look at those December figures in my hard data and see what I can suss out in the period between the period between the period. <laughs> to see what I can suss out about the season reference and the time reference. I will go back and do that. I just want to say that, and I apologize to the court for including that data. I just thought it was perfect. We really don't have time for explanations beyond the question. Because I'm trying to get you going. Let's limit ourselves to the questions, please. Is it correct to say that you've never studied the policies of the TK leadership? That is incorrect. Okay. Can you tell us how you studied the policies of the TK leadership? In terms, I'm, I'm using the term study as a read and ponder. Yes, I've read and pondered and talked to many historians because after I did my research, I found some similarities. Um, I found some similarities. So, Madam Witness, um, did you... Come to the conclusion that DK policies began to loosen at the very end of 1978 in an attempt to attempt, particularly after the Vietnamese invasion, to retain a bit of popular support for their regime. Would you agree with that based on your studies? My studies were on the wedding, so I was interested in the looseness or tightness of how things happen around the wedding. So I, my own comment on that. Okay, let me move on. 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 To frame the questions I will ask subsequently, I want to summarize a couple of things you said. And if you can answer this yes or no, please do so. Do you answer this yes or no? 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 Do you answer I did come to a conclusion that they were not forced, referring, I understood, to all the marriages in your study. Is that correct? Yes, I wrote that. Yes, that's correct. And do you also say that true, you hold that view of all weddings in DK or just of the ones in your study? I don't know. ในลูกสไลด์บางส่วนทั้งทั้งการกับการบอกกี้คือการได้บังคับหรืออนุเตตัยจังเมนเต้ ครั้งการสู้สมรู้แบบนี้ถ้าตาปุกกอดจะไม่ได้บังคับไอริบการหรือการนับเป็นแต่ขย่มสันนิษฐานถ้าปุกกอดมันจะไม่ได้บังคับ
That is not correct. In terms of the way the question was framed to me, that is not correct. Which way that looks so can you frame the question again so I can listen? You told us that you concluded that these 109 individuals, I guess we're talking about 181 marriages because 11 of them were married to each other. But these 181 marriages were not forced. And you've also told us you never asked people who experienced it, who were there and had to marry whether they considered their marriages forced. To re-quote your quote of me, which you said, worked very hard not to ask. And I did work very hard to not ask. But there were some times, not frequently, where I did ask. But I was very careful not to lead an opinion with people when I was wanting to understand what conclusion they have come to, how would they define, how would they identify. I did not want to put words in people's mouth. However, I did ask. Did you think your weddings were authentic? Not everyone said yes. Madam Witness, there's a very big difference, don't you agree, between asking if a marriage was real or authentic and asking if the person consented to that marriage. Do you think it's possible to have a marriage that someone does not consent to, but it's real, it's authentic? I would like you to state that again for me, please. Let me then give you a scenario. A father goes to his daughter. He says he's got a shotgun. You have to marry this man 30 years older than you. They go before the religious body, whatever religion they are. The marriage takes place. Under the law of that country, they're married. That's, an, that's a real marriage. It's not illusionary, correct? No one took out a gun to anyone in my sample. Madam Witness, are you saying that no one in your sample felt threatened, that they were uh, under threat that they could possibly die if they refused an order of the car? No, I'm not saying that. Okay. Let's, let me try to move on and then we'll try to clarify some of the language because some of the differences may be in the language that we're using. First, forced marriage. When you use that term, you are not using a legal definition. Is that correct? Um, yes, thank you, um, Mr. President. Um, by this question, um, I don't think there is a legal definition at all of forced marriage. The question whether forced marriage was a crime is something to be debated. It has never been judged as such. Um, it isn't in any criminal code, so maybe the prosecutor can enlighten us as to what the legal definition actually is. Certainly. Legal definition of forced marriage, for example, is explained in the Cesse et al. decision of the Special Court for Sierra Leone. I probably have that with me somewhere, but I don't think I can find it at this very moment. Organizationally, I'm completely a mess, so I don't have it right now, but I promise I will come back to that after the break.
ปัญญาในทุนตัวโลกมันกรอบเป็นชุดจุลแรง Did you study the decisions, for example, of the Alex Tom de Bruma case at the Special Court of Sierra Leone, or the Isa Hassan Sese case at the Special Court of Sierra Leone, which defined the elements of forced marriage as basically, I'll, I'll give you the exact language later, later, but one in which a person is married under circumstances where they did not give free consent because of force, the threat of force or coercion. Um, if I, okay. <laughs> Just um, a uh, uh, problem, uh, clearly, ยุริดิกคือเอ่อดิฟินิชั่นสู่ละเกลเซคุลิชั่นเอ่อดิฟินิชั่นสู่ละเกลเซคุลิชั่นเอ่อดิฟินิชั่นสู่ละเกลเซ
compels, I'll, I'll, I'll read the quote again, <coughs> compels a person by force, threat or force, or coercion to serve as a conjugal partner. So my question is, do you agree that certainly many of those who responded to your survey, even if they were not asked, told you that that's exactly what happened, that they felt compelled and coerced into a marriage they did not want? I, I need to be very careful here because force, threat of force, or coercion, for me to respond to that question in the affirmative puts arranged marriages in general on the carpet here, and I'm not prepared to do that right now. Well, I'm not asking you now about arranged marriages. I'd be happy to come to that subject. I'm asking you about the marriages under DK. The marriages, I'm not asking you about arranged marriages in prior periods. I'm asking you about the marriages under the Khmer Rouge, the 100 and 81 marriages that your respondents were part of, isn't it correct, or tell me if I'm wrong, most of them, certainly many of them, told you, even if not asked, that they felt compelled or coerced to marry a person they didn't know and didn't want or didn't want to marry. Uh, I, I really um, do not think this is a very uh, fruitful exercise, but, but, but besides this, um, the definition that uh, by the prosecution on, uh, coming from uh, Sese uh, apparently refers to uh, the actual perpetrator, uh, the man. Uh, using force or the threat of force or coercion to marry forcibly a woman. Um, this is not the situation, as I understand it, that um, the, the expert has been referring to. It's a more general threatening situation of the DK regime as such. But it's a totally different situation. There is no example uh, of a man forcing a woman uh, uh, to marry, as was apparently the case in uh, our UF case uh, in Sese. So uh, there's a total mix-up of, um, of not only geographical situation, but also legal situations. Now, it would appear that you are ask, answering the question to the expert. Uh, my feeling was that was exactly the question. If the expert says, no, this is not the situation in Cambodia, I think we would expect her to say exactly that. Your Honor, my response would be that it's obviously, as councils both have pointed out, this is not time for a legal debate. But just in response to council's uh, remark, that clearly wasn't the situation. And Sese was not convicted of his own marriage. He was convicted of marriages of other people. That's what was involved, leaders forcing marriages. So, Madam, forget, I'm, I'm asking you now whether, in your opinion, I'm going to ask you one more time, those that you interviewed volunteered without being asked, many of them, that they married only against their will after being compelled and coerced. Before I give my answer, I just want to say that the definition before me of the word forced uses forced two times. 
So the definition of forced is forced, threat of forced, or coercion. That's confusing to me. I'm sitting with the coercion right now in contemplation because I cannot say yes to the word forced in what you just referenced to me, nor the threat of force. Um, I'm sitting with coercion in the context of people losing access to traditional ways of moving through recognition of a wedding. It's not that I'm avoiding your question, it's just that I think this word coercion requires a bit of contemplation on my part. I will do that, but in this moment, I can say I'm not agreeing with forced based on this definition, one word in that definition, I will contemplate. Okay, thank you. So we have your answer is that you do not agree that people were forced. I now want to go to what you were talking about, coercion, and talk to you about the atmosphere of the DK period. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but you spoke to people about weddings and pregnancies and children. But in the course of that, you learned a lot about how they felt living in the DK period. Is that true? That is very true. How would you describe the atmosphere in regards to coercion to obey Angkor orders during that time? To obey was to increase privilege and to have the potential for some safety. You're a trauma psychologist, is that correct? A psychologist that specializes in trauma? Yes, that's correct. Would you agree that almost everyone who lived during that period of time underwent an experience of extreme stress? Well, I object to this question. Um, I'm sure the uh, expert will be in a position um, to answer this, but um, she has interviewed only uh, the people that she referred to. She cannot possibly say anything about the, rest, uh, the mental state of the rest of uh, democratic countries' population. Uh, well, Your Honor, I think the defense is calling the witness yeah. in reference to all marriages in democratic Cambodia, and not just the 181. But I'm fine to limit it to the ones that you talk to. Madam, witness, doctor, would you agree that all of those you talk to in depth about their experiences indicated that they were victims of extreme stress living through the DK period? Pause on your word victim, but putting that to the side, I would agree that the level of trauma that was exacerbated by lack of access to ritual was excruciating, and I would like to give one case example. Um, because you raised the issue of birth. I had a woman in my sample 
was to deliver. There was a Khmer Rouge birth center. A woman whose abdomen at the time of delivery was cut open so that those in training to be attendants could see the physiology of birth. Now, one would think from a Western perspective that that would be about as traumatic as one could imagine. However, I want to add another dimension that was part of the discussion on Ankar this morning. When I proceeded to understand the level of distress that this woman suffered as a result of witnessing that, what was to me, as a Westerner, what I would have imagined her stress to be was, would I be next? My life is threatened. The intensity of her fear was based on the fact that the deceased pregnant woman and the deceased infant could not rest their souls, and those souls would continue to roam because there were no rituals for her to enact in that regard. Would you agree that those that witnessed such killings for basically no reason, capricious killings, would be under severe stress and fear of death? I think that they would be paranoid mostly, looking over their shoulder frequently, afraid on a daily basis. Yes. On page 118 of your book, I'd like you to comment on this. You begin this chapter about spirit humiliation by saying, quote, nearly everyone spoke of death in the decay period. There were deaths by starvation, deaths that were assumed following disappearances, random deaths of being called out at night, deaths during interrogation, deaths following interrogation, signs of death, such as seeing a severed arm on the ground. Deaths by torture, deaths by malaria, deaths by hyperthermia, and deaths by the sun. Madam Witness, do you think this phenomena of people constantly being aware of the possible imminence of death would affect the exercise of free will and consent and whether or not they objected to Ankar's choice or decision that they should marry a specific person. Before I did the study, I would have, in an unqualified way, agreed with you. However, it's important that I hold the meaning of the weddings to people that lived through what you just read out. My following sentence is, suitcase of death was more than the mind body could hold. For those people that I interviewed, the wedding was a moment of change for them. It was the moment when they thought there was a chance for a different life. As bizarre as that sounds. Before I go back to that, let me um, just ask you about a few more comments in your book that describe the state the situation in DK that the people were living in at the time that these marriages took place. On page 121, you talk about your interview with Mr. L. And he said, or he wrote, whether one can live or die is not done by any choice. We could get killed at any time, any time without any trial, 
Just like killing animals, I kept expecting to die. I waited to die. On page 113 of your book, I'm sure you recall this, you talked about a man who witnessed his sister cut open right in front of him. So on the bottom paragraph, this apparently happened in 1976. On page 182, you talked about this incident we mentioned already about the woman who saw the pregnant woman. Uh, page 135, you, you spoke about your interview with Mr. A. And you said that Mr. A had a friend who was called out at night. The next day, he saw the severed leg, which he recognized as being the leg of his friend. And he was called out the next day or shortly after, and it turned out to be for his wedding, but he worried about whether it would be for his death. Is that correct? What's correct is that for a period of time, particularly in 78, people were called out. If they received a trauma, it usually meant they were being called out to go to a wedding. If they did not, it often meant, according to what people heard, that's important to say here, that it could mean death. And on page, and I, I, I just want to qualify one more thing, going back to the, the uh, Mr. L on page 121, where he says, there was no muscle, only skin over my bones. I had a big knee and big elbows, such big bones. What I can say is, as, as difficult as this was for me in doing my research, I was interested in, if you will, rank ordering people's fears, and people were, um, and 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 rank ordering what it was that traumatized people the most, and it was often that someone witnessed someone that they were very close to starve to death. That seemed to be so much more profound and dream haunting for them than them witnessing someone who was killed. Though I have to say that most of the references to death were, I heard about this, or a friend told me about this. So this was a quite unique um, well, you would characterize the situation for most people as one of being in a state of starvation and fear. Is that correct? The severity of that related to the region and time in which people were situated, but generally starvation, um, especially at the beginning, um, and in 76 and 77, um, was a big theme in my study, yes. On page 150, you talk about your interview with Mr. A. I have the ERN on the thesis, and maybe it's 0042553. And let me read to you what you wrote before I got in the car. 
the Khmer Rouge took all my papers, my books, certificates, even photographs, my birth certificate. Skipping a bit. They even took my chicken. Chicken. They just took it. If people didn't give all they wanted, they would ask you, do you want to be alive? But you want to die. So how can you choose? He was silent for five seconds. He said, how can you choose? Madam, do you think there's a difference between the ability to deny Angkor the goods or the chicken in the case of Mr. Ray and to deny the leader, district head, other authorities tells a young person that they are to be married to someone selected by Angkor? Would you agree with that what Mr. A said, how can you choose, applies equally to the marriage? Free choice is impossible. Protest is impossible. Okay, Madam, At, at this moment, I'm not ready to answer your question. Okay, you. you talked about, in your words, you <coughs> don't want to like to use the word forced marriage, but you say it's like being a conscripted marriage. That was the national duty. Did I understand you correctly? That is the term that I have used. Well, conscription in the DKM in particular, because that's what we're talking about, talking about the democratic of someone using conscription? I have a number of examples of man. And he was sent to a labor camp for a while, and then sent back to the village. I gave an example yesterday in one case where a man just agreed the choice. The choice was to be sent for labor, came back. There was a different person in charge, and he chose his partner. Person in charge, and he chose his partner. I think we crossed wires a bit. I'm asking about consequences of refusing military conscription. It's my fault for not making that clear enough. What was the consequence of the DK of refusing military conscription? Well, I don't know what the In the cases I had, um, les sujets d'objectifs, même si je pense que Madame l'experte est suffisamment même de répondre. Pour être clair, dans sa déposition, l'expert n'a jamais parlé de conscription militaire dans le cadre du complotage démocratique. Elle a fait un parallèle entre le mariage sous le complotage démocratique et la circonscription militaire ailleurs. Donc, euh, la question est formulée euh, par le procureur. J'ai l'impression qu'il y a une décision. Elle n'a jamais parlé de, 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 de devoir militaire sous le complotage démocratique. Et je ne suis pas sûr que c'est les études portées dessus. Thank you. Actually, at least on one page, you do discuss the consequence. Page 121 of your book, you talk about an interview with Mr. B. And he told you that they collected all the men in Sang district, even the monks. Quote, we all had to become part of the army or we would be killed. So you're equating 
หรือฉะนั้นคือลูกสไลปริบทีบจุมเรนในการรีบกาคือโดยคะแนนในการจับตะเฮียนหรือก็โดยคะแนนในกระตับประกาศยุทธเนในสมัยขมายกระหอมได้ตาอันจังเหม็นตี No, that's not correct. จำลายอัตเตมันตรมตรายตี And when it comes to this conscription and nationalism, some believe that if marriage is part of a national policy, increase the population, coercing someone into marrying strangers. I just want to ask for clarification on your words, legitimacy. If it's not a forced marriage, it's consumed something less than that. It's national service. It's a term that many governments use internationally. In some ways, I have to say, to justify um, taking people into service with the consequence if they object. And so that is the reason I chose that term because this, this is the this regime was. Very tricky. And to to not think through a term that might be better applied in the context of DK, not only on, but in the context of DK, it's the best term I could find that represents this context given my research on this topic. There may be a better term. ແລະມີປະຊາຊົນຈຳນວນຫຼາຍຈຶ່ງນີ້ປະຊາຊົນມາຢືນຖືການສຶກສາສາຊາຊາຊາຊາຊາຊາຊາຊາຊາຊາ
chân lo cái thà ai việt việt nam pleasure mùi là bao nhiêu khi em chẳng xong mà nhà bình chân mặt tệ mùi phong đây chuyện đưa ta khi em ăn nhà ta khi em ai bình chân mặt tệ bàn đã được tiếp tục bật hiện ông chơi The reason I want to just introduce the statement about this example is because recently I was interviewed by a journalist in the New York Times. I was I, I, I was not exactly properly referenced, but giving. Putting that aside, the journalist came yeah. to me to tell Sapa me that ma, ma there was an estimate that was, that was being accepted about the number of women that were married under decay. And, and what did I think about that number? And I said I have not seen any formal research studies on that number. And I said I have not seen any formal research studies on that number. And I said I have not seen any formal research studies on that number. And I said I have not seen any formal research studies on that number. I did. I found the studies, and then finally, after much, much research, I found a statement that I'd like to read. By way of comparison, it is estimated that over 200,000 comfort women were enslaved by the Japanese military during and around World War II. Although the two practices are totally different, the numbers may have roughly equivalent. The Cambodian village. Nè chấm đi nha, an an chấm nói mình làm với nhau, nè bỏ phải bỏ toàn thì. I apologize, I was reading too quickly. Sum ở phía tôi lúc bữa tiên chấm an riêng liền bận tay hay. A number that's now being thrown around in the media as if it is as if it has been quantified in a study is a statement by Laura McGrew by way of comparison. It is estimated that over 200,000 comfort women were enslaved by the Japanese military. Japan, the Kanong Sankrim look like the pay. Although the two practices were totally different, the numbers may have been equivalent. If a Cambodian village of a thousand, if in a Cambodian village of a thousand, there was an average of two group marriages. During four years, the Khmer Rouge would be empowered with 15 women involved in each ceremony. This could mean that as many as 210,000 women were forced into marriage out of a population of 7 million. The reason I raised this is because that was the first time I heard anyone mention Women with regard to the Khmer Rouge weddings, and now I hear it again today. I find the implication offensive. I find the implication offensive. You explain why it's offensive. What is the difference you say? เปลี่ยนยาตาลูกสไลด์โยธาการประมาทและประมาทได้ลักษณะยังไม่ได้ได้ได้ว่าเท่าเท่าเอาอิสระมันเนี่ยอาริบกาจะมวยจนจมไล
ហើយ <coughs> 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 I was asked a question with a reference to women. បាទបាទបាទនេះបាទ